Mini episode 964 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello, everyone. Welcome to FDH Lounge, mini-episode number 964. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris coming at you with two of our favorite FDH Lounge dignitaries. They are gentlemen who do a podcast together every week. Of course, Callus Remarks with Steve Callus and Joe Stazak. And these are both gentlemen that you can also catch on other platforms as well whether it be Steve Callis making appearances on WFAN in New York or SNY, or Joe Stazak with his regular hosting job over at 97.5 The Fanatic in Philadelphia. Uh, it is a pleasure to get both of them in, and uh, we're going to be discussing March Madness today, the 2018 NCAA basketball tournament. I guess it won't be March Madness in our official listing for this segment here, lest we get sued. Uh, they're a little litigious about that, so... Uh, officially, the the college basketball championship tournament. Uh, nobody can see me making air quotes right now, but uh, that's what we'll be uh, referring to this as, I guess, for official purposes. So uh, again, when it, when it comes to anything uh, with, with potential legal landmines, who would know more about that than the counselor himself, Steve Callis? Steve, good to get you in, my friend. How are you today? It's great to be with both of you, of course. Uh, looking forward to this. I am as well. And uh, Joe Stazak, it is always a pleasure, my friend. Good to have you in. Oh, thank you, boys. Good, good talking to you again, Stephen. How are you, my friend? Everything good. Very good to have both of you guys in. We're going to be looking at this region by region. And again, you know, just kind of taking the high spots here. We're not going to go game by game on this in terms of uh, how we see it shaking out. Uh, We will start with the South region. And uh, one of the top line bits of analysis that you've been hearing over the course of the time since uh, the brackets were announced, which is uh, about 24 hours since that point in time as we're taping this, is that Virginia got uh, ostensibly a a difficult road to the Final Four for a number one seed, especially for uh, a team that was not the lowest of the number one seeds. And you could look and you could see that. Where I would kind of push back a little bit is uh, for people who are picking uh, Kentucky or Arizona to get past them. Uh, Again, not to be master of the obvious, but that's going to be a brutal game, obviously, for both of those teams. So I think you're going out on a big limb to pick either of those teams to get past Virginia because you're essentially picking that team to win two tough games. Virginia only has to face the winner of that game. So that makes it a little bit easier. Cincinnati uh, in the regional final might be... Uh, again, they'd be a difficult team, but matchup-wise, it would not seem to be a team that would give Virginia a lot of trouble. So I'm probably tipping my hand a little bit here on where I'm going with this region. Uh, we'll make our picks here at the end of the show. I'll start with you, Steve. How do you see the South region shaking out? Well, you can consider me out on a limb because I just was on with Joe on 97.5 The Fanatic over the weekend. I said I love Virginia, best defense in the country. I think they should be the number one seed. I hate picking favorites, blah, blah, blah. And then I said at the end, the only concern I would have for Virginia is if they had to play Arizona because Arizona has the best player in the tournament. Uh, They have incredible rebounding. If Virginia has a weakness, it's defensive rebounding. So I am going to go out on a limb, and I have Arizona beating Virginia. You're assuming Kentucky is going to get by Davidson. Davidson's kind of a sleeper there, but, you know, Kentucky won the SEC. They're one of those always a Calipari team, always going, you know, from bottom left to upper right, and this is no different. But they don't have, you know, Anthony Davis. They don't have that superstar freshman that they usually have. So I'm, I am picking Arizona to beat Virginia because I just think their rebounding is too much. Now, I will say this. Jay Billis, of all people, Jay Billis said um, about DeAndre Aton, who's the big guy, who's going to be the number one draft pick next, you know, in the NBA draft, and who had a monster season and then a monster Big 12 tournament. And Jay Billis said, and I don't understand this, maybe you guys will explain it to me, he says, 
I don't know if you can pick a guy and say there's a Danny Manning, uh, you know, Danny Manning and the Miracles. That's the way he said it when Danny Manning, of course, led Kansas to that unlikely championship. But then he said, but you can say there's a Will Chamberlain in the tournament, and it's this guy, DeAndre Aton. Well, I don't think he's Will Chamberlain. He's got a lot better chance to be Danny Manning, if you ask me. So I just found that to be so bizarre where he's saying this guy, Jay Bill has said this guy is a, a quite likely NBA first pick, all-star, Hall of Famer. <laughs> And then he says he's Will Chamberlain, and then he picks Virginia. So whatever you guys think of that, I'll stop right there at the bottom of the bracket. I pretty much have the chalk in the south. Uh, but I like Arizona, and I like them big time despite all the Sean Miller stuff, which he for right now has, you know, survived. Uh, but they're very, very big. And Trier is a big time player. So that's why I am going out on that limb, Rick, and I'm picking Arizona over Virginia, which Joe will tell you was the only team I thought could beat Virginia. Yeah, well, that's very interesting. And again, you raise the specter here, Arizona, depending on uh, if they can win the whole thing or any of these other teams that are under a cloud of the NCAA right. eventually proclaiming that the 2018 champion actually was vacant uh, as opposed to a specific school, which a goofy, goofy thing that they do because the NCAA has tried for years to tell me that I wasn't at an Ohio State-Michigan game in 2010 where Jim Trussell got his ninth win over Michigan. I swear to God I was there, and my dad is my witness. We were there. We were at that game. NCAA, you're not going to gaslight me about that. I see you working uh, on that. So perhaps Perhaps they'll try that mischief again with this tournament. Uh, and if Arizona wins, uh, I think the odds are better than not that good old vacant is going to claim another title. So uh, on that note, uh, Joe, I don't know exactly where I'm leaving it for you, but how do you see the South shaking out? Well, I never thought we'd get a podcast with the word gaslighting in it. First time for everything. And, you know, I want to just listen to the sound bite because uh, – I'm with them. I like Arizona. I mean, Virginia, listen, their defense is ridiculous. You know, they give up, you know, they give up games in the 50s. You know, Rhode Island scored 55. Black Tech, 52. North Carolina, they held them to 49. Um, you know, I like the way that they play. You know, and, uh, all those Tony Bennett's only been the one to reach. Eight. Uh, I like Country Eight, and I don't think he's Will Chamberlain, but he's super he's super <laughs> Andre Fryer, like you mentioned, 18 and game. They're one of the best. In the country, and we have Jackson Cartwright. Uh, you know, we haven't even played this year. You know, they don't play great defense. They don't have any points or more in nine games. That's a lot. But uh, I think offensively, you know, when you have the two big guys in you know, Mystic and uh, and Eaton, and I don't know if anyone stayed up late this year to watch Slogan Hours on the Kid is a monster. And I also think they're playing with a chip on the shoulder because of all that. Uh, you know, the stuff with the NCAA and the scandal and Sean Miller's now back, you know, playing for your coach and doing all this kind of stuff that uh, we hear about. But, uh, yeah, I like Arizona to come out of there. And the great football would be another sleeper team in that region, although you can't look all too see the sleeper. But, uh, you know, they've been struggling lately. Um, you know, they, they, they're they 3-6 and six down the stretch. They, they usually um, give Nova a hard time. They give Nova in February. But, uh, you know, again, I think Arizona – Exactly, and again, Arizona a team that uh, probably underseeded based on their uh, ability. Certainly, uh, Kentucky feels that way as well. Calipari has not been shy about voicing his complaints about this. So, two teams perhaps that the NCAA was looking to uh, give a tough path to. They're going to face each other, and that is going to be uh, one of the Bafo games of the first weekend, uh, if not the biggest one. Again, you know, you're smart to point out, Steve, again, Kentucky does have to get past uh, Davidson. That's kind of a hipster pick out there that some people are making because Kentucky every year is pretty inexperienced. Davidson is your prototypical small school team, uh, junior and senior laden, so they, they have experience uh, for a situation like this. If it's a close game, you could possibly see that uh, swinging the way a little bit. Uh, as we go to the West region, and I'll start with you this time, Joe, in looking at this again, as you would expect with Xavier, who I believe is the fourth of the four number one seeds, uh, they do have a path in front of them that is extraordinarily challenging, whether it be another mid-major uh, in their way uh, in terms of uh, Gonzaga, who I happen to think is going to be there, although, again, you, you certainly couldn't rule out 
uh, some of the other teams uh, in that way there. It's, it's been a miracle year for Ohio State thus far, but uh, i got to say, I think it ends here, and I'm actually going to go on record and pick the 5-12 upset. But uh, Gonzaga uh, is, is probably going to be in Xavier's way on the bottom part of the bracket. Uh, Houston-Michigan could be a very interesting first uh, game here, uh, or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, first weekend game. But uh, Michigan and North Carolina are my picks on the bottom part of the bracket here. So I'm looking pretty chalky as far as it goes uh, in, in terms of looking at this. I think North Carolina's got a good chance of coming out of this because of the upside that they have uh, when they really, really have it going here. And uh, they've been very, very battle-tested in what looks to be almost a historically tough ACC this year. So uh, how do you see the West materializing, Joe? Well, in terms of UNC, it would be their favorite title game. I don't think it's one of the great UNC teams, although they, they, they turned around a 10-point loss a couple weeks ago to Duke into a win. They beat Duke the in the ACC tournament, which, uh, you know, again, throw out the record when those two teams, you know, get it on. Um, I agree with what you said about the Ohio State. They've been a top 25 team all year. Uh, big man might be a potential first-round pick. No bad losses for them this year. Um, you mentioned Houston. See, I, 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 I this bracket, they'd be my sleeper team. They really would. I mean, uh, yeah, they beat Arkansas by 26. They beat Providence by double digits, which tossed State by 14. I mean, um, they Rob Gray. They, they are a dangerous team, in my opinion, although I do think Michigan, I'm, I'm going to pick Michigan to come out of this uh, bracket. to beat Purdue for the Big Ten title. Steve knows I'm a big Purdue guy, at least in this tournament. And they swept Michigan State in the two meetings. This year. The country can turn over. You know how I like uh, and how I think it's really important in each board. Um, they have Xavier Simpson at the post. I think they're a legitimate final. I think they're a legitimate final four contender. And if you want to talk about Xavier, I'd say they're a good team this year. Um, Kevon Blewett's uh, 19 points this year and five rebounds. They lost to Nova um, by a combined 40 points in two games. I don't think they're going to risk the third time. I like Michigan coming out of this bracket. Michigan, again, yeah, based on if they play their best game, and again, we're going to say that about a lot of teams here, and I guess that's kind of obvious. You're making that point about them and what they've done at their best. I'm making that point about North Carolina. And, and yeah, I, I suppose it is, a, it, for a lot of teams, a, a, what version we're going to get of them. A lot of that is going to be matchup specific. I think Michigan has it in them to make a very strong run. I agree with you there. It will be very interesting to see with the Big Ten's experiment of playing the uh, tournament at MSG a week early. And Michigan and everybody else is sitting there with about a week and a half off, which is uncharted territory for a major yep. conference at this point. Minor conferences have that happen all the time, but they're usually the fodder that goes out in the first round or the second round anyways. For a major conference, this will be very illuminating, and if the Big Ten underperforms expectations here, we may not see a repeat of this anytime soon. So, Steve, what are your thoughts on the West region? Yeah, well, apparently they were desperate to play in New York, and, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want with that, but that seems to me to be out of the ordinary to wait that long. But I've been on the Michigan bandwagon for a long time. I'll just give you a quick funny story. My daughter went to Williams College, and I was up there visiting her once, and we went to a D3 Williams College basketball game, and I was watching these guys warm up, and I saw a 6'8 kid hit 10 threes in a row like they were 10 layups. Turned out it was Duncan Robinson, who became the first guy in the history of D3 to leave D3, transfer to a D1 school on a full scholarship. And this guy's, you know, an incredible three-point shooter and is just one cog in, in, in the excellent team that is Michigan. Having said that, I'm going to go with the experience, and I don't mean North Carolina, I mean Gonzaga, because Gonzaga has two starters and their two top subs from last year who, as you know, went to the title game lost to North Carolina. I think North Carolina is good and can make a run, but they're not the the normally almost dominant North Carolina team. So I, I went with the chalk, but I have Gonzaga beating Michigan to get out of West. 
And the one upset I'll give you, because maybe I should have said it before in the South, but the one upset I'll give you, I got like one or two in each region. I'm going to go Providence as a 10 to beat Texas A&M. And I'll go back. Joe won't want to hear this. But in the uh, South, I pick, <laughs> I pick Loyola of Chicago to beat Miami. Because uh, I think they're a real good team. I actually saw them play late one night. They can shoot the three. But I've got like one or two uh, upsets. But out of the West, I think it's Gonzaga based on their experience. I love Michigan because they did beat Michigan State twice, and that is a big deal. It's not just two top teams playing each other, but everybody knows about the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. Forever. I also think Beeline's an excellent coach, and um, but I think Gonzaga, Mark Few, I think they get back to the Final Four. Uh, well, then I think Xavier is the worst number one by far. I'm surprised I didn't think they'd be a one myself. Uh, and also going back to what you said, Rick, for some reason Virginia, I thought, got the shaft. You, you know, Calipari could complain because he always does, but to put Kentucky and Arizona there, and one of them is probably going to play Virginia, I mean, that is a tough road. Um, so, yeah, I've got Gonzaga coming out of the West, uh, but certainly Michigan can be there as well. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I join you in picking the Loyola-Chicago upset as well from the South region. I think that is going to materialize also we flip over to the other side of the bracket here in the east region and this is one where again we have uh, as uh, joe will be happy that i note our champion from two years ago villanova in there as the number one seed uh, city of champions as it were and uh they have uh, a path that uh, again is is going to have a, a couple of obstacles in its path uh west virginia can be uh, a very infuriating team to play texas tech is sort of a variation of that as well if they end up catching them in both games which i think they're going to uh the bottom part of the bracket here uh very interesting uh because again there are those who would see purdue as having a nice uh path to uh, at least the elite eight here uh, if not the uh, just the sweet 16 i'll say sweet 16 i do kind of like texas tech uh in a matchup over purdue and uh again in the uh final here i would like Villanova getting through I think that they can do that but uh, a very interesting round two game potentially West Virginia Wichita State if it comes to that a 4-5 so that could be something that's very fascinating as well as the in-state battle of Butler and Purdue you, you could very well get that and I think we will uh, the first weekend so in looking at this uh, Steve I'm going to stay with you uh, your thoughts on how the east is going to shake out well, I think it's, I won't say easy path, because none of these paths are easy, but I think it's a relatively easy path for Villanova uh, to get all the way through. Uh, yeah, I think they have to play West Virginia, and West Virginia always has Huggins, and they can always defend, but they never quite really get over the hump. Um, I think they beat Wichita State. Uh, the one upset I have, which sounds like you have as well, Rick, is uh, Butler beating Arkansas in the 10-7 game. But I do have Villanova and Purdue uh making it with Villanova coming out of the East. Uh, I do think, again, of the four, if you're looking at number one seeds of the four, I think Villanova has the easiest trip to get to the Final Four. And again, I'm putting easiest in quotes. Obviously, they'll have some tough games. But, uh, you know, Brunson's unbelievable. They have an unbelievable team. They have championship-winning players who were actually on that team, especially, you know, a guy like uh, Brunson, even this Mikhail Bridges, you know, they have two two players up for the Wooden Award. I don't know if that ever happens. Uh, not in my memory, maybe it does, but to have two guys up for the Wooden Award is really incredible. So I like them to go all the way through in the East. Yeah, I do too, and uh, yeah, I think that's a very good catch on your part, by the way, uh, when I said Butler and Purdue, yes, I would be picking the upset to see that happen, no question about it. And uh, for you, Joe, in uh, looking at the East, I guess it's a question uh, primarily of uh, is this going to play out, do you think, the way you want it to? Well, I'm going to sound like home cooking, but uh, I do like the team this year. They have four four players, potential NBAers, you know, Mike Spellman, and like you said, Steve, um, Bill Bridges, Jalen Brunson, you know, the Italian kid, that big Vincenzo, who struggled against Providence, but. Uh, and what I really like about them is still Lewis is back healthy, and he was one of the stars in that championship game two years ago. So they all have experience. Bridges played a good game that uh, a couple years ago, Brunson as well. I know he played a lot behind Ryan Austin Jackson. Now they've been in the top 10 team for 48 straight weeks. This is their fourth straight season with 30 wins or more. My problem is that they're usually feast or famine. 
famine in the uh, in these tournaments. I mean, last year they didn't play well in round one, and then they lost to Wisconsin. They blew a seven point lead with five minutes. So they didn't seem like you know, themselves like they were. They didn't run on that mission. I think they're back to being focused and on a mission again. And I think the team that I think was standing in the West, I think this is really, you know, and yeah, I could see some upsets. I like Florida over Texas Tech. Uh, to get to the Sweet 16, but I think Purdue is the other team that I think can give them some real problems. They can give anyone some real problems. They are the long, the athletic, the um, second class, the reported point shooting team in the country, which can work both ways. If you go cold, but you know, one night only, you know, one night to go cold and you're out. That's the way this tournament works. Um, but they have four seniors, and I like seniors in these tournaments. Uh, four, four out of five seniors on the starters. Um, one sophomore. Problem is, they are in the 200s in offensive rebounding and creating turnovers and opponent three points. And Nova's a pretty good shooting team for three. Uh, but again, I, I like Nova. They're going to down on a lot of teams this year, 30 and 4. And, uh, you know, most of the games weren't even close. They were, you know, they got affected by Providence and they came through. You know, they blew a big lead. And, you know, Providence, God bless them, Providence played. You know, very well in that old tournament, but Nova took the overtime and then, you know, won, and I believe covered as well, which is, you bet Providence, you're out of your mind in that game. But, um, so I like Nova to go all the way to the uh, final four, and then we'll see. Yeah, and I think, again, the path that they have, I'm going to concur with you guys. I think it really kind of fits into that narrative that they can make it back in there and make a strong run and recover from the disappointment of last year, which is a pretty good segue, actually, to talking about the Midwest and the number one seed, Kansas, a team that a lot of times really kind of inexplicably, uh, uh, they, they get into trouble. You know, they just, uh, early on, it's always, uh, I mean, if I had a nickel for every time the first weekend, I had them go in a decent length and they go out. So maybe it's a good sign for them this year that, I mean, I look at them and I'm, I'm really kind of uh, underwhelmed by them. I, I just... Uh, but the, the path that I see, they may have a fairly clear path to at least the Elite Eight. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another one of these hipster upset picks. I'm going to say New Mexico State, not merely in the first round, but to the Sweet 16, which, again, is just going to make for a better path for Kansas. I think the real action is on the bottom half of this bracket. Oklahoma is a team that people are going to be paying a lot of attention to because with Young, there's they're basically a puncher's chance in almost any game, I think you'd have to say, although we've also seen what happens uh, in those games when that's not enough. And there have been enough games where that hasn't been enough that they almost missed the tournament. Some would say should have missed the tournament based on being deserving. But Duke and Michigan State, the game that is looming here in the Sweet 16 round, it doesn't seem like there's anything that can happen to prevent that matchup from occurring. Uh, you know, t- TCU might say otherwise, but that appears to be destiny right there. And for a lot of people, it seems to come down to who they think is going to win that game. That's who they think is going to make it to the Final Four. And indeed, in that case, it's me. I think it's a coin flip, and again, Um, we're talking about if teams come out and play their best game, if both of these teams are really clicking, we could be looking at like a triple overtime classic for the ages because uh, you're talking about two real, real, real heavyweights if they're both on their game, which they haven't been at all times during the years. Injuries have had something to do with that for both teams. I'm going to say Michigan State to, to come out of that game, to get past Kansas, to make it to the Final Four. Joe, how do you see it shaking out? Joe, I'm with you. I'm with you, Rick. Um, Duke's always there. They're always in the mix. You know, they have Grayson Allen. It seems like he's had like eight years of eligibility. I don't know when he's going to graduate, but he's been there forever. I like what he did. As a freshman coming off the bench against Wisconsin, he had some issues along the way. He's having a few unstoppable right now. Mark Bagley, uh, what else can you say about him? Behind the Andre, you know, he's arguably the best player in the country. I know they got turned around a little bit, beating North Carolina a couple weeks ago, lost to North Carolina. Um, the other day, but uh, they're always in the mix. Number two, I like Michigan State. You know, Miles Bridges, uh, probably a lottery pick. It's almost 40% for free. Jan Jackson, you know, uh, in the gym range, also defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. And uh, it's, it's the team is, uh, you know, defensively the best team in the country defending the three. And, uh, you know, I, just, I like the way they play. They play fast. They've got, you know, doing the lottery pick. And uh, defensive player of the year at the Big Ten. And Kansas, all it's worth, I'll reiterate you know, some of the things you said. They, uh, 
they always seem to take a bath at some point. They, they just do. I know they won in 2008. Either three by Mario Chalmers, you know, Derek Rose was spitting up free throws, but uh, you know, they do get a certain food chip, but, you know, uh, there's a couple things that are, you know, set in life that back to Kansas is going to blow some, some games somewhere along the way. I know they're four guards for the big, and Delonte Graham playing ball for ball this year, but uh, you know, they're not a great defensive team. Uh, since they get the Big 12 title, there's nothing to speed up, but again, they're Kansas. And uh, they're number one seed again, fine. Doesn't mean much to me. You know, I like the state coming out. That's yeah, and I'll tell you what, an excellent point on Grace and Allen because Duke just specializes in guys that are there seemingly forever, at least in terms of feel. Like when I started hearing about this uh, coaching job that Steve Wojciechowski might be able to move up to, I was like, isn't he still playing at Duke? I could have sworn I just saw him running around with his goofy haircut last weekend. You know, I guess I, I don't pay close enough attention here, but uh, I guess he's had two or three coaching jobs since leaving there, so. <laughs> Shows how much I pay attention to college hoops the rest of the year, I suppose. Guilty as charged. But, uh, <laughs> just like most people, as I've said on the show previously, this is when we all sort of get looped into it. So as, as we look at the Midwest, uh, Steve, are you going to make it uh, three for three on going for Michigan State? I am going to make it three for three. I don't have a whole lot to add to what you guys said. I will say Grayson Allen is probably the most hated college basketball player in America. <laughs> he was far and away number one last year, and I think he has repeated this year. Um, but, yeah, I'm not a Bill Self guy. I'm amazed they won one. Um, and Kansas is that kind of team. Plus, you know, that Azubuki, he's still hurt. He's wearing a brace. I don't know where he comes out for the tournament. Um I do have a few upsets in this. Uh, in, in this, uh, I have New Mexico State beating Clemson. Uh, you guys may laugh or love this one, but I not only have Syracuse beating Arizona State, but I have them beating TCU as well. Okay. And uh, and you know, I don't know, Rick, if we're going to spend any time on teams that didn't get in, but I will say this: Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma twice and beat Kansas twice and couldn't get in. There's something basically wrong with that. Um, I, wait, 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 I got a few others, but I just, um, you're right. Uh, Dre Young can go for 40. I still like Rhode Island in that game. But I like Michigan State to beat Duke to get to the Final Four. And Michigan State, don't forget, they're 29 and 4. And that includes those two losses to Michigan, which elevated Michigan a lot in my eyes, uh, but didn't really lower Michigan State in my eyes. So, yeah, I have Michigan State. Coming out of the Midwest, as do you guys, with a few more upsets. Uh, uh, even North Carolina State, you know, it's an 8 9 game, but I have North Carolina State beating Seton Hall because they beat Arizona, Duke, and Kansas. I know they had some bad losses, but that's a heck of a resume. It is. And I have to say, Steve, just in terms of uh, observing basic broadcast ethics, I need to prompt you, you didn't preface your Oklahoma State more deserving than Oklahoma thing with the preceding commercial announcement brought to you by T. Boone Pickens. You forgot to say that, Steve. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) No, I thought that was just, look, I'm I'm sure you guys, I got a list, you know, and I'm sure we can bat around five or six teams. But just to straight up, Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma in the tournament. They had beaten them before. But again, they beat Kansas twice. So if you buy into Kansas as a number one seed... (laughs) <laughs> you know, it was just unfathomable to me. Now, Trey Young lit it up. Actually, Dan Dockage on ESPN now, he said the only reason they got in is because Trey Young was the most talked about college basketball player in the first two months. And he's right, and I totally agree with that. I don't care what these guys say. They look at the body of work. They look at this. They look at that. If my team beats your team twice and beats one of the top four teams in the country twice, they have to be in, in my opinion. What's very interesting is that uh, Trey Young is a guy who LeBron James has not been shy about letting the Cleveland media know he wouldn't mind playing with next year. And oh, by the way, what team happens to have the Nets pick? So very interesting there and very hopeful from the perspective of a Cavs pick that there's anybody that's catching uh, his eye to that degree Uh, as far as it goes with Duke I just have to say also too like most of the rest of America I root against them relentlessly like good people everywhere but it's been an unusual thing for me this year the son of the greatest legend at my alma mater Gary Trent Jr. Shaq of the Mac Jr. playing for Duke so it's been an unusual thing for me to have to root for any one player for Duke I don't think that's ever happened before 
and until there's a Gary Trent the third, that will probably never happen again. But uh, as we go to the final four here again, just to recap on this, I think I gave broad hints on some of my picks, was outright on what I said with some of the others of them, but I have Virginia coming out the south, North Carolina coming out the west, Villanova in the east, and Michigan State in the Midwest. So in the national semifinals, we will have yet another ACC rematch here between Virginia and North Carolina. Interesting to see what happens as they meet up yet again. I will look for the same result that we saw ever so recently with Virginia advancing to the national championship game. Villanova, Michigan State, again, that could be a classic for the ages But I'm going to say Nova in that one. In the battle of the V's in the championship here, I'm going to say Villanova over Virginia in what should be a very interesting national championship game. Virginia at least somewhat kind of getting the monkey off their backs as far as how deep can they go in the tournament. They're not a team at this point that has to win it all to kind of shake that label, but they got to make a deeper run than they've made in the last couple of years. And I think they, much like Gonzaga of a year ago, will prove that they can at least get to the championship game, and that will be progress for their program. That's what I think is going to happen. Steve, I'll start with you. Uh, Well, my final four, uh, South and West, Arizona and Gonzaga, you know, I have to say, when I said to Joe on the radio in Philly, uh, love Virginia to go all the way unless they have to play, unless Arizona's in there. When I saw where Arizona was, I immediately said, oh, man. Villanova's going to win the whole thing. But if I'm jumping on the Arizona bandwagon that early to beat Virginia, uh, I'm going to stick with Arizona to beat Gonzaga, get to the championship game. Uh, I like Villanova and Michigan State on the other side, and I like Michigan State to beat Villanova. I think Izzo and that team is always, you know, they're just tough kids from Flint, Michigan, usually. Um, They're just a tougher brand of basketball. Although, again, Villanova has two guys for the Wooden Award, so they certainly can win. So I have Arizona and Michigan State in the final, and I have Arizona winning 74-68. And I think you might have been one of the first people to predict, Rick, that uh, that title might be vacated. And look, Michigan State has had their own issues this year (laughs) as well. Uh, So it could be a nobody's in the final, at least the final I've picked. Yeah. Yeah, if I was CBS or TNT or whoever's televising that championship game, I, I would ha- I would keep like a graphic of the Grim Reaper in the upper right of the uh, the, the broadcast screen at all times because that's who's coming for that title if those are the teams playing for it. I hate to tell everybody. Well, well, you know, Rick, I think I think it's interesting because the and and I don't know if Joe heard this, he'll be happy to hear this maybe. But right now in Vegas, Villanova is the favorite to win the whole thing, which I found yeah. a little surprising. Um, but they are the favorite, so, um, you know, maybe Jay Wright is cleaner than the other guys. I don't really know, but it's almost like if you look far enough, you can find something against virtually all of these top teams, and that can't be a shock given what college basketball has been and, frankly, is now. For me, in my calculation of it, if, it comes to, if you want to make, like, a mathematical equation, I would say success thus far times path to the final four that's kind of what I would look at and that's why I come out with Villanova because they're not going to get tested I think as badly as early as some of these other teams are going to and they in Virginia I I think the consensus holds up they've been the best teams all year and there's been a little bit of question in the case of Virginia in terms of how they play as to how legitimate that's going to be when March rolls around how much is it going to shake out you don't have those questions about Villanova that that even though uh, a lot would tell you uh, that uh, Virginia has been the best team this year Villanova has been right on their heels as I say don't have the questions in terms of style of play and whether it could be sustainable as a matter of fact they won it all two years ago so there are no such questions and again have a pretty good path to get out of their region so Joe, how do you see it uh, shaking out? Are you are you going with my optimistic scenario for your program? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do because again, you know, they um, the piece of famine, they made a final four run since two thousand nine, North Carolina Wax in the semifinal, um, won the whole thing uh, a couple of years ago. They bounced by Wisconsin. They had a history of I know Jay Wright, you know, probably the greatest coach in football in history, but he does have a history of getting out in the early singles. Predecessor um, Steve Lapis, but I do like them. Uh, like I mentioned, to make it to the final four. One, one, uh, I, I went back and forth on this, and I had Rhode Island. 
proved two years ago that this program can win, so I don't think anybody should be giving you the stink eye for that one, Joe. <laughs> hey, Rick, no, Rick, I do have one stat that you'd find interesting as the guy who picked Virginia to go to the Final Four, and and credit to ESPN, they had the stat, but uh, Virginia was unranked before the season started, and in the history of the NCAA t- uh, tournament, there have been three teams who were unranked who made it to the Final Four. One was the Larry Bird Indiana State team. Wow. So they came in second, obviously, to Magic. One was the Pat Riley Kentucky team, who lost to, it's not UTEP, it was Texas Western back then. You'll recall yeah. the first the first team ever to start five black guys. I think three of them were from the Bronx, of course. Yeah. Um, but I'll also point out that that was the year when freshmen couldn't play, and Lou Alcinda Kareem was a freshman. Uh, so that was an interesting year, but Kentucky did make the final as an unranked team at the beginning of the year. And the third one was a couple of years before that when UCLA won their first title with John Wooden, where Walt Hazard was the star of that team, and they won it all. So you had three three teams that have done what Virginia is trying to do. Two of them got beaten the final game, and the third won it all. So that, if you believe in those kinds of stats, I just found the whole thing to be like a fascinating stat. Um, but that bodes well for Virginia if you're looking at it from that perspective. You know what's the most amazing thing is that that's a stat where two of the three teams, one is an Adolph Rupp coached Kentucky team, one is a John Wooden coached UCLA team. What are the odds of that? That's one of the great pieces of bar trivia ever, I think. Yep. <laughs> that is man. that is amazing. Well, kudos to you for that little uh, nugget, uh, Steve Callis. And as always, thank you for being on with us tonight. Really appreciate it. It's a fun to do it with you two guys. Really appreciate it as well. And, uh, again, Joe, thank you so much for being on too, buddy. Uh, good luck to uh, Nova. Uh, you and I are picking them to go all the way. I certainly hope I'm right. <laughs> I certainly hope you're right too, Rick. And, you know, always a fun time with Steve and you. Appreciate, you know, you having me on and uh, us together. A good time. Can't wait to get it going on Thursday. Absolutely. Can't wait for this thing to tip off. It is going to be magical. And in the meantime, it's been magical breaking down. The March Madness, the 2018 NCAA Basketball Championship with these guys. Thank you, as always, for joining us here in the FDH Lounge. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Paper Mate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 